Yeah. Good afternoon. Welcome. My name is Roland. This presentation will be in English. If that's a problem, then you know. <laughs> if it's not, uh, you're welcome to stay. Um, if you have any questions, you do not have to wait until the end of the presentation. Just interrupt me and I'll be happy to answer your question, if I can. Um, let's start. This is GitHub for beginners. It's not really, really beginner because it assumes you know something about programming and GitHub. Um, I start this with a laundry list of terms that we see um, in our daily work come by when you work with Joomla or in your own project with Git. It's Git, upstream, staging, commit, pull request. Word is too long, so we always call it a PR. It's not our personal record. Uh, we have push, pull, fork, clone, and there's a lot more, but these ones will come by in the presentation. Well, Git is Git. It's the version control system that Joomla uses for maintaining their code and many other people. Uh, Git is the system. GitHub is a service on, that is using Git. Uh, another one is Bitbucket. It uses Git as well. So the system is actually not GitHub because that's a service. But we use GitHub as Joomla and, well, personally, I'm starting to like it more and more. Um, the GitHub world, I like to call it, the way we work with Joomla, is because we have three locations that we work with. We have the Joomla code that's online on GitHub. You have your code online, which is a copy of the Joomla code online. And you have your code local on your computer. To get your code online, um, it has to be a copy of the Joomla code because then you have the option to change the code because you're not allowed to change the Joomla code. Well, I can, Victor can, but that's the only people in the room I think that can. <laughs> the your code online and your code local, that is actually yours. That There you can ch make your changes as you like. Um, but to have the code local on your computer is just a little easier to work with the code itself. If you want to change files um, online, you can only do one file at a time. You have no code completion. You only have a simple code editor in your browser. And with your code online, you can use your favorite editor to change whatever you want. And there's a sidetrack from Joomla code straight to your Joomla code local. And that is needed because you're not the only one that is working with Joomla. The whole world is. And more and more people making changes on the Joomla code. And you need to get the changes into your system so your system is always up to date. So that when you make a change to a file, you don't get a conflict with somebody else that is actually changing the same file and the same line. So the Joomla code, as I said, it's read-only, and we can only pull information out of it. We can only take it from there, we cannot put it in there. And that's where the word pull comes from. Your code online, that's where you're the boss. You can read the code, you can write the code, you can pull from it. As you saw, to get the code from online to your local computer, you're pulling it to yourself. You can push your changes, so when you have worked on your local computer and you said, okay, now it's ready, you push it back to GitHub. And you can create requests that we call branches. And I'll get to branch a little bit later. And basically the code local is the same thing as online, only I have added the modify files. Yes, you can modify the files online, but it's really a hassle. Um, so it makes it a lot easier to have it on your own computer and that's why you actually want your code local. For example, if you're on a plane to nowhere um, and you're like, oh, I have nothing to do on this plane, right? Let me work on some Joomla code. You can actually modify the files all local on your computer and later when you have an internet connection again, you can send it online. 
So what is with these branches? The word branch comes from a tree because the things growing out of the tree, we call them branches. And that's exactly how the Joomla code works as well. We have uh, the trunk. The trunk is the big part of the tree where the tree stands on. And that is stable. It doesn't really move. If you hit it with a car, usually the tree doesn't go anywhere, nor does your car anymore. Um, and so is with the Joomla code. We want the Joomla code to be as stable as possible. Um, and this is the main branch, and we call it staging. Actually, it's master, but that's a separate story. We call it staging in Joomla. And these are the branches that people have, uh, have made. A branch can be a bug fix, it can be a new feature, it can be anything. Um, so when we make a branch and we send it online, it gets a number. And those are the numbers you see here. These are the same numbers that you will find in the issue tracker of Joomla. And of course a description, because if you ch make a branch online on GitHub, it will call it patch 1, patch 2, patch 3, patch 4, which doesn't really make any sense to us. So if it's for a better image or CSS optimizing, or you fix an error in the menu, then at least we know what we're talking about. I heard the other day that now at GitHub, if you do make a change, it, you can actually change the name patch 1 to something more meaningful. And all these branches uh, are just little pieces of code. These will need to be tested. Uh, that is done by the Joomla bug squad and people part of it. We do it during the pizza, bugs and fun sessions and people do it at home. And once we're all tested and the code is reviewed and everything is good, the branch will be merged into the trunk and the branch will be closed. And then we have a stable code. And that's why the branches are important. Because by having a branch with only this little piece of code that only fixes this one bug or only makes this one small change, it is a lot easier for us to see what is happening and how to test it and to review the code. If, you, if we ask you to send a complete Joomla installation, we have to check which files and everything. But in this way, we get only the files that have changed. And so it's easier to maintain and easier to review. So practically, let me show you an example of how we do it with changing a language file. First, we need to get a copy of the Joomla code because uh, we don't have access to the Joomla code to change the files directly. If you go to GitHub, you have this nice bar at the top and it has a little button there called a fork. And the fork is where you're going to click to make a copy of the Joomla code. And that is what GitHub will do. It will have a nice photocopier image moving back and forth until it's done. And that's how you get a copy from the Joomla code to your code online. It's free, doesn't cost anything. And that's what we call a fork. And at the time of the screenshot, there were 1,627 forks. And I'm sure that has increased a lot more by now. The next step is that you have your copy of Joomla code. Now you want to change it because you want to fix a bug or change an image or do something else. You have to clone it to your local uh, computer. And that's the clone command. And it's based actually almost like a fork, but now you're only making an exact copy to your own computer. And that is how you can control the code online as well. This is a screenshot from an IDE called PHPStorm. It's today my favorite editor. Um, I don't know tomorrow if somebody comes up with something else. But for today, I use PHPStorm a lot. Um, it's used also by many people in the Joomla project. So that's why my screenshots are from PHPStorm. When you start PHPStorm, you get this nice quick start screen. And it's not very different than many other IDEs where you can choose to start your new project. And we're going to choose checkout from version control because Git is a version control system. Before we had SVN, some people still use it. Before that we had CVS, Mercurial, there's some others like that. It will ask you, 
or it shows you this screen and as you see it says clone repository. So that's what we saw in the picture before where we're going to clone the online code to your own computer. You have to put in the repository URL. On GitHub, if you go to the GitHub page, it will have a very small screen with only the beginning of the URL and a nice icon next to it for copying. You can click that to get the correct URL and then paste it in here or in the program you're using. Well, the parent directory is only where the code needs to be put on your computer by the uh, IDE. And then finally, the directory name. By default, Git also takes the name of the repository, Joomla CMS, but I already had one, so I had to change it. Um, and once that's all filled in and correct, you can click clone and it will start cloning. One more thing about the GitHub repository URL, it's exactly the same as the Joomla CMS URL, but only it will have your username in it. So you can always figure out where um, the code is coming from. Once it's cloned, it takes a little bit because it needs to download all these files and do all the housekeeping. Uh, you get into your editor with all the files and then PHPStorm has a nice image or you can right click and say new branch. Every time you're going to make a modification for your Joomla project, your personal project, your customer's project, make these changes in a branch because that way you can work on some code um, without interfering with any other code. And it's easier to, main, to keep track of what you have done and what you have not done yet. Well, if you click new branch, it wants to know the name of the branch. We're changing a language file, so I have named it language. And then you have to click OK. This is the structure of the language files uh, on the front end in Joomla. You see there's Joomla test, what I named the folder before. On the front end we have the language folder and inside the language folder is by default the British language file. Um, and the language file is engb.ini. I saw that Brian Thiemann made a little mistake, so I fixed it. And now I want to um, send the fix to Joomla. In PHPStorm you can see if a file changed because it becomes blue instead of black. It also has another field which says change files where you can get a list of all your change files. But that's an easy way to distinguish if your file has changed. So the next thing that we need to do, we made this change because now it's all better. We want to send it back to Joomla. First, you need to send it to your code online. So you have to update your code so that your code has your changes as well. And that's what we call a push because we're pushing it away from us up to uh, GitHub. Oh, there's another nice icon for that. Or you can use the menu item. It's, there are many ways you can push it. And the push, um, before we can push, we have to commit. And a commit actually just means I'm saving my code. I'm, the changes I made, I want to save them so they do not get lost. You can do one commit. You can do two commits, you can do three commits, you can do a hundred commits before you even do a push, just to save your changes. The one thing Git wants to know with every commit is why are you saving it? So it will show you which files are being saved at the top part, and at the bottom part you have to write the message uh, as to why you're doing the commit. Now, in this case I want to correct the text. There are some other nice things here is that it says perform code analysis and uh, check to do. And what it will do is it will run through the code sniffer rules if you have set it up as uh, the previous presentation was talking about to set up the code sniffer. And to do this, you write a to do in your code that it will tell you, well, wait, you have to do, make sure you have finished everything. So you click commit and then it's being saved and then you immediately, well, there's commit and there's commit push. 
and then you can do the push. And then you're really putting all the changes from your computer online. There's, it's maybe hard to see, but there's a small plus sign before the language. Uh, it means that the branch language doesn't exist yet online. Um, to save you the hassle, it will automatically create the branch for you. So you don't have to do anything extra. Now, when everything looks okay, you see here only the word correct text because I only have one commit. If I would have done 10 commits, you would have seen all the 10 comments that I've made for all the 10 commits. And then with push, we're sending it online. Now, once you have done that and it's completed, you go back to GitHub, to the Joomla repository, you get a big yellow bar uh, telling you, I have seen that you have pushed some changes, uh, on the, in this case, the language branch. Do you want to make a pull request? And the pull request is sending a signal to Joomla, saying, hey, Joomla, I have new code. Will you please uh, accept me or not and test me? Um, so then we click on the green button because we do want to send the changes to Joomla. And that's why we're making the commit. And you'll see you'll, the comment that you made in your commit will come back here. GitHub can read that comment and it will use it as the subject line for your pull request. It will also tell you that uh, the base is staging because Joomla works on staging and that's where we did the fork before. And language is the branch that we made with the changes. And it is checking that to make sure there are no conflicts. Because if there's conflicts, you'll see a lot more information on the screen. Um, but that's another step. And you shouldn't have any conflicts unless you have a really big one or you have really waited a long, long time to send your changes. Then what we want is that you leave a comment here. And the comment is, first, what is the problem that you're fixing? Um, how can we test the changes that you have made? And any other extra information, screenshots of showing the changes from before and after your patch so that people uh, can test your changes correctly because any code change that is being sent to Joomla, we need at least two people to test it. Um, otherwise, it will not get into the Joomla core. Without test instructions, people cannot test. Um, or they may test, but they may test completely wrong. <laughs> so if you're going to leave the comment, put in as much as information as possible to help others to help you get your pull request done. Because you can check the issue tracker. There's many issues without any information, and they're sitting there for a long time, and eventually they just get closed, and the work is done for nothing, which is a, a shame. So once you're done with writing your comment, you can click on create pull request. And that will send a message to Joomla. Hey, listen, I have new code for you. Please accept me. And then the circle is complete. Because we first had the Joomla code that we forked to your code online. So you get a copy of the code that you can work with. And um, yeah, we're pulling also the code from Joomla code to your code online. Then we cloned the code from your code online to your code local. It's actually also a pull because you're going uh, still forward. But we have access to the code online to make the changes, so we can also push the code back so it goes both ways. And eventually we have from the Joomla code to your code online, you can do a pull. And that is really needed because if I fork the Joomla code today, the next week a lot of changes have happened and my code is old. So I need to get the latest changes from Joomla code, put it local, and then I can push it also to your code online. You need to do this sort of exercise for every branch that you're working on. Because every branch is independent 
um, from, from the other one. So if you update one branch, the other doesn't know about it. And that was the end of the presentation. <laughs> Make it complete. Because now you know you can fork the code, um, you can change it, and you can send it back to Joomla. And that circle keeps going constantly until you decide not to work with Joomla anymore. <laughs> Any questions? Eli. It's wrong per pull request because one change, uh, because everything needs to be tested <coughs> isolated as well. Because if you ask people to do two or three things at a time, we, we can't handle that much. Just one thing and that's all. Any other questions? Then I thank you for coming and if you have any questions later on, I'll be around all weekend, even later. And if you want to run tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock, <laughs> we have the Joomla performance run. Now, and enjoy lunch.